Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now as you can see I've got yet another scenario for um, Upfront laid out in front of me and I really want to start by saying a huge thank you to all of you who have been following the series and putting in requests and having some very lively discussions with me about this marvellous, marvellous game because it's these exchanges and the various requests I've received that have led to this, which is going to be my 50th un uh, upfront video, which is an incredible thought. Um, so yes, anyway, so what's brought this one on? Well, a number of um, separate threads of correspondence have led to the creation of tonight's scenario, which is going to be a playthrough of a early 1943 North African scenario. So one of the things I think I've not um, done in this series, and it's it's been mentioned a couple of times by a couple of you, actually, is that there's been armor battles in my series. I've included um, ordnance weapons, but I don't think I've ever had a scenario where armor is pitted specifically against ordnance. So we're going to have it in this scenario. Um, Quite a number of you have also got in touch with me about the um, Highlander rules that I was tinkering with. Uh, and despite my health warning that that um, it's quite hard to um, play through a scenario and, and guarantee you'll make use of them, I've been asked if I can include them in a video. Um, and if the opportunity arises, I can dem perhaps demonstrate the Piper in action and also the Highland Charge again if the opportunity presents itself. So I've crafted this scenario to try and uh, um, cater for the both of these requests really and so the, the premise of this one is it's the immediate aftermath of the collapse of the Mareth defence line in early 1943. Uh, and the British forces here are an unspecified fragment of the British 51st Highland Division, which was part of 8th Army at the time. So in the aftermath of the breaking of the Mareth Line, the um, various elements were basically what's left of the Africa Corps and their Italian allies are withdrawing to northwards to make a final stand somewhere. And um, the Allied armies are in pursuit. So what we have here is a piece of the victorious um, Eighth Army chasing up a remnant of a German formation. And now just to keep things a little bit interesting, and I'm slightly regretting this decision now, I came up with a uh, random system for generating variable squad strength. So I started off with a, an average strength for both squads and then drew a random number to see if either squad would be slightly weaker at its ideal strength or slightly stronger. And my luck being what it is, the British came out slightly weaker and the Germans came out slightly stronger. That's not really what I wanted, but there we go, fortunes of war and all that. So what's happening here is that a, a pursuing group of British soldiers who are obviously showing the casualties of previous battles because, as you can see, they've only got eight men in their squad rather than the British norm, which is ten men. And they are backed up by armour, but this has got to be one of the last Matildas still in service, which is not really an encouraging thought. Good tank, don't get me wrong, she's a good tank, but unfortunately for me, she's primarily an armour killer. So her effect on infantry is probably, well, it, it would have been nice if we'd brought some high explosive along, let's put it that way. The German force, which has emerged from the break of the, the, the breaking of the Mareth line, reasonably intact, they still have their full complement of, um, of 10 men, um, have also managed to salvage a 50mm anti-tank gun from the wreckage. So... Not only are they facing me in, in reasonable strength, they also have an anti-tank gun, which I'm going to have to worry about. So I'm playing a fairly straightforward encounter scenario. Desert rules do apply. Uh, I'm going to be playing the British side and I'm going to be solitaring the, the German side using the rules given in the Banzai expansion. 
I am including my optional Piper rules. Um, if you're someone who's joining my channel for the first time and this is the first of my videos you're watching, just so you know, the, the optional rules I've been working out for Highlanders, including Pipers and the Highland Charge, are... Um, are laid out in my my previous video titled Highland Terrors. Um, so if you're interested in checking up those rules, please do have a look at that video. But in the meantime, um, let's crack on. I'm following the standard victory conditions uh, about either breaking the enemy squad or occupying terrain with four men at range chit four in terrain that reduces the effect of incoming fire. Um, and just one final point. Um, in this scenario, uh, I am not counting the infantry gun or the armour towards the breaking of the squad. So the British have to be very, very careful in this. The, um, the, the loss of four or five men will be enough to ring down the curtain on their little advance. But let's see how we go. I uh, tossed this handy coin to see who goes first, and the British um, came up the winners, so there's some good news there. Um, the coin is there to identify my piper, and if the coin is not on his card, he's not playing the bagpipes. If I move the coin onto his card, then he's playing up. So let's uh, let's just say that I'm approaching this one cautiously to begin with. Why attract attention when you don't need to? Um, so looking at the British hand, it's not really brilliant to start with because, um, I mean, following desert rules, um, buildings with a defensive strength of minus three are treated as cower cards. The minefield um, is what it is and can be used. Well, it is, minefields are always used as such in desert scenarios, but I don't really want to be messing around with that just yet. It'll be a handy one to play on the Germans if they move their guys around at all. So, so the British will start not deploying any terrain. I'm just going to turn over the German cards to see what they've got. Um, Curiously enough, they have no terrain cards either, so it looks like we're meandering towards each other across open desert. Now, looking at the British start hand, this this is terrible already. Uh, I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to be discarding straight away. Um, I do want to keep my rally cards, because I imagine things are going to get fairly bloody with that... Um, with the amount of firepower the Germans have at their disposal. I can use that card as smoke, so I may want to hang on to that. That cower card is probably not of much use to me. Hmm, difficult decisions. I think... I will take a chance on getting rid of the minefield and the buildings cards. So I'll draw two and hope I do better. Okay, a possible oasis and a gully. Okay, that is better. Now I just need the movement cards to actually get to them. Um, I've already looked at the German hand um, because I've, I, I was looking to see whether they had any terrain. They do have a movement card and as they are in um, open ground, they're probably going to try and advance because they don't... They don't need to advance, but it would be useful for them to try holding me back. And the desert's probably a good place to try pulling some flankers anyway. So with this movement card they've got, I think the two of units of theirs that don't need to worry about moving are their main group centered around the anti-tank gun and their fire support group with the machine gun, because those can pretty much reach out at long range. The group that's wasted at this distance is their group A. So despite the low morale rating of these men, they're going to risk an advance. They've got a good number of concealment cards in their hands, so they're feeling fairly confident about this. 
And they're not going to discard any of their cards. They're just going to draw another one. And perfect. They have exactly the terrain they want for next turn. Now, going back to me, there's not a lot I can do, really. I have good terrain now, but it's not... It's not really what I want. Um, and also, I have no movement cards, so that's a problem too. So I'm going to take a chance discarding the Oasis and the Smoke card. And I'll draw two. Oh, that wire could come in handy. Uh, yet another rally card. Do I really need this many rally cards? Possibly not. We shall see. Uh, oh yes, turning over the um, turning over the German card, which I probably shouldn't have looked at when I drew it. Sorry about that. Um, they are naturally going to dive their group A into that handy patch of brush over there. Uh, and that will actually be it for the Germans. They're, they're just going to sit pretty on what they've got. And leave it up to me. Now, I still can't do very much, so I'm going to risk throwing out that Rally 2 card as a discard. But I'm also going to discard a wire card on their anti-tank gun, or at least on their group B, um, which includes the anti-tank gun. For those of you who aren't familiar with ordnance, note that unlike armor, it has the choice of either being a group on its own or integrating with an infantry unit. So I've done that. Let's see what I get. Please, movement or firing cards. I'll take firing cards. Okay. So over to the Germans. Now they have just drawn a... Um, I'm just turning over their cards. And they have that. They have no movement cards. They can't get rid of the wire. But that's a fairly powerful firing card. And it's tempting for them to use it uh, with their anti-tank gun because no one else has the capacity to, um, to, to use it at the moment. Their infantry are uh, too far away. Even the heavy machine gun, or the, the LMG rather, the light machine gun, can't, uh, can't use it at this distance. Now the fact that they're under wire will make it a diff difficult shot, but it may be worth them trying to knock my tank out at the start of the game. So they're going to do that. They're going to give the order to fire. They do acquire me for future shots. Now because of the wire card, instead of a um, to hit number of zero, <clears throat> excuse me, they need to draw a one. So let's see what they get. Oh no, really? Oh dear. <laughs> Precisely what they needed. This could be a very short battle indeed. So, the gun, which has just scored a miraculous hit on me, um, has a armor penetration rating of 3. Now, normally what's added to this is the relative range, which thankfully for me is zero. So they draw a... Actually, do they draw a random number check? I always get confused with ordnance. One moment. Nope. Thankfully for me, it's a straight addition of the relative range, which at, at this distance, their strength of three means it's insufficient to penetrate my frontal armor, which is four. 
Thank goodness for that. So they've boinged a shell off my tank as a, a very effective warning shot from this distance. But at this range, they can't harm me. So that was probably a wasted shot, but it's making them feel better. And they draw a card to end their turn. Now going back to the British, we still can't move, which is hugely aggravating. But I might have my tank return the favour because I really don't like being shot at. So I'm going to target the group, but my shot is not going to affect the infantry because I'm using armour piercing and attempting to knock the gun out. It's going to be an equally difficult shot because of the range. Now, the German player does have concealment cards in his hand, but he cannot play them because the infantry gun has fired this game. An infantry gun that has neither fired nor moved in a game can play concealment cards, but once it does something to give itself away, it's um, exposed, and in, 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 for the purposes of being targeted, it's exactly like armour. So by helpfully firing, he's revealed himself. I'm going to take my shot and my Matilda needs a one. And the shot goes wide. We were way off. Got to envy the accuracy of those German gunners over there. But at least I do acquire the target, so I'll have a slightly better chance of hitting him next turn, unless he or I move. Um, I won't have my men do anything else at the moment, so I'll just draw a card. Finally, movement! So turning over the German cards, they don't have many good choices. There's nothing decent coming up. Mostly rally and concealment cards. So what they're going to do is they're going to discard the one card that is completely useless to them. That's the pillbox card. And they will just draw. Now, what am I going to do? Part of me wants to move my tank forward, especially as that German gun has a bead on it. And it does seem the logical thing to do, because I want to close the range. I do have something of an advantage because that wire card is still impeding the Germans. So I think I will do just that. I will have the tank go clanking forward and hope that he doesn't have any truly disgusting terrain to, pl to discard on me. And I'll draw and I get another firing card. That could be useful. So over to the Germans. The Germans have lost their acquisition on me and I've lost mine as well by moving. But maybe it was a good thing I did move because that German anti-tank gun is going to try another shot. And this time the uh, relative range is one, but because of the wire card helping me out, um, he has to get a zero. He also has to get a black zero because I'm a moving target and the gun misses. I have been acquired, but thankfully he has missed. And so the Germans will draw another card. Okay. Now I wonder whether it's worth me firing while I'm undergoing while I'm on the move. Maybe it is because that's a weak weak firing card. Unless I want to try suppressing him by other means with my infantry, but at this distance I don't think it'll make much difference. It's difficult to know what to do. Actually I might be better off trying to suppress his group A rather than trying an impossible shot with my tank. So I'll do that instead. 
My group B can make use of their Bren gunner to try and bring some fire down on his group A. Now, in theory, unknown to me, he has a mass of concealment cards, which he is now going to use. Uh, and in the interest of keeping his very vulnerable and fragile group A intact, he's going to play concealment of three, which allied to the brush means I'm firing at him at minus three strength, so that's not going to be great. Um, Private Schultz is fine, does justify the uh, card he played. Private Beck is fine, and Private Wallach is fine. And I shall play no other cards this turn, can't really. I get a concealment card, which could be handy. Now the Germans, I'm just turning their cards over to consider their options. They've got that. And the question is what to do with it now. Because they too have troops within range that can use a weak firing card like that. The only thing is, their LMG, there's not much chance of them suppressing the tank. And equally, a lot of my high morale value men are over there. So it might be worth them trying another shot with the anti-tank gun. In fact, yes, that may be the best option as they've acquired me. It's still going to be a difficult shot because I'm still moving, but perhaps worth trying. So relative range is one, so they need, a, but they are under wire, so they need a zero. Phew. I mean, they would have needed a, <clears throat> excuse me, they would have needed a black random number anyway, because I'm on the move, but that was close. They can't do anything else, so they're just going to draw two cards. So back to me, and my options are still looking pretty awful. Um, I still have more rally cards than I need. Um, I think at this distance I'll risk ditching the rally and concealment cards because I really need options and at the moment I simply don't have good ones so let's see what I get Ooh, okay I might burn that using the tank and a sniper is always welcome um, the Germans for their part are as equally stuck as I am. As I turn over the cards I drew for them last turn, I can just see um, a hero card and a rally card. So they, like me, they now have an excess of rally cards. So they're going to discard that one and just draw a replacement. Right, over to me. Um, I'm going to try another vain shot with my tank. This is... Uh, this is rapidly turning into a tank versus anti-tank gun duel with everyone looking on. Um, I have a tricky shot too. Um, it range is still relative range one. I'm not under a wire card, which means I can hit him on a zero to one, but it does have to be a black random number because I'm moving. So wish me luck. Oh no, that is not at all what I wanted. So with a loud clunk, my tank's gun decides that it is going to um, malfunction. Great. Let me just find the appropriate counter of shame. So my poor Matilda gets an ordnance malfunction chit. Not at all what we want. And I can't do anything else. I'm just going to draw a card. Oh, this is going to be a slow one. Uh, turning over the German cards, they have a, a concealment card to add to their ensemble, but still not a lot that they can do. So they're going to take a bit of a chance and throw out another rally card. 
I'll just draw another for now. I mean, at the rate I'm either not moving or suffering breakdowns, I've, you know, the Germans really don't have anything to worry about. I think I might just go for a discard option and see if I can get anywhere using my sniper. So I'm going to discard that rally card. And my sniper is going to go for German Group B. So he is aiming at random position 2, which is Corporal Hessel. Okay. It would have been nice if he decided to pick on the anti-tank gun and their crew, but you can't have everything. And he draws a 6 for a KIA. Gosh, that was a brilliant shot. Oh, I'll leave that by the German group as a reminder. So Corporal Hessel has just died, making for the first casualty of the game. I'm just going to find a little counter for his dropped uh, machine pistol. So there we go. I wasn't expecting that result, to be honest, but every little helps. That was quite a worthwhile decision for the British. And just to give us another reason to cheer up, we get another movement card. So going back to the Germans, things are not looking quite so rosy for them anymore. The difficult question they've got to deal with is... Um, do they want to bother returning fire at my sniper or do they want to do something else? Now, I've just turned over the fresh card that they drew and it's a, a woods, which in this case would be an oasis card. But like me, they're suffering from a dearth of movement cards. So to be honest, they, well, they can't really, they can't really do anything about that attack they suffered because they have to, um, they have to get a higher draw when with their counter-attack, which it's impossible to do. So they'll just have to let that one go. And there's nothing else they can do with their hand as it currently stands. So um, with a great deal of unhappiness, they're going to chuck out a concealment card because, yes, it really has come to that. And I don't know what they've drawn in their next card, but hopefully it won't be something unpleasant. Um, this is all pretty encouraging for me. So I think I might copy their example. And I might start my people moving forwards. So I'm going to tell my group A to advance. play a movement card on them to get them moving forward. And I want my tank to try and repair itself on the move. Ah, no joy. They're still hammering away at that jammed breech block, but the gun is stubbornly refusing to behave itself. Never mind, as long as it starts working, you know, when we need it to, then we'll be all right, like you know, now would be good, because I'd really like to use that card. So looking at the German hand and turning over their latest card, they have a firing card, a fairly powerful one again. Their group A is at relative range 2 to my moving group, but they don't have enough firepower to use this card. Their group B can't use it either and and um, neither can their group C so I think the logical option for them is to try and bag my tank again so their gun is going to take its shot no another miss moving targets are really difficult to nail in this game but given how lucky I was with the sniper it probably is worth them trying
they're not going to discard anything on my moving group because they don't have any hideous terrain that's worth dropping on them. So play passes back to the British. Now looking at my options, one of these is a bit of a no-brainer. I'm going to chuck my group into the gully because um, it's a very weak group I've got out there on the left, but it is the squad leader and it is the squad piper. <laughs> so there is a method to my madness, honestly, because following the piper rules as I've laid them out, you can support a group with the piper as long as they're at the same uh, relative range chit as, as you are. So if group B catches up to relative range 1 and the piper plays up on a subsequent turn, they will get the morale bonus. But at the moment I thought I'd just get them a bit ahead because there is a tiny amount of firepower there and it does make it easier when group B advances to catch up with them. Whether this is a good idea remains to be seen. The only other thing I'll do is get the tank to try and fix its ordnance again. And we succeed, thank goodness. The gun is back in action. So quite happy with that. I'll draw my card. Oh, perfect. We can hopefully start raining shells on them soon. Uh, the Germans turn over their card, and I'm afraid for, their, for them it's a concealment card, which is really not what they need right now. So, in, in something akin to despair, they're going to... Ah, I wonder if this is worth them doing... They do have a Woods card, which they were going to keep for themselves. But they could potentially cause my tank problems by bogging it down or forcing me to reject the terrain. So... Of course, if they do that, though, they give me the option of um, refusing it. And then I can actually throw off their acquisition. So maybe they don't want to do that. No, they're going to hang on to it for now. It's quite a valuable card, potentially, even though there's a 50-50 chance it could be a Mirage rather than an Oasis. So they'll hang on to that for now, but they will discard their weaker concealment card. Um, back to me, I think I'm going to use that card to get my tank shooting. None of my other chaps can do anything, but we'll carry on sitting back and enjoying the show. The target, of course, again, is the anti-tank gun, which we're now quite desperate to knock out. So I need a 0 to 1, and it has to be a black one. No, no dice. Now, I just have to see whether I can... I'm afraid I've suffered another moment of brain failure. I cannot recall whether I acquire them as a target if I'm on the move, so bear with me a second.
okay, I don't acquire the target because I'm moving. And actually, I think they shouldn't have acquired me because um, I was moving while they fired. So we'll ignore that. Uh, it would only have applied if I was stationary. So we're just plinking away at each other somewhat ineffectively. Um, however, I have got another movement card as I top my hand up. So that is good. Looking on the German at what the Germans have got, they finally have their first movement card of the game. And I think as a matter of urgency, they're going to get rid of that wire card that's been hindering them so badly. Uh, unfortunately, that's just about all they can do. But as they're not worried about acquisition and they shouldn't have been worrying about it, they're going to play they're going to discard that card on my Matilda after all, because it it occurs to me, and I probably should have thought of this on their behalf last turn, that as they've really not been getting the movement cards, they may as well throw this in my path just to cause me problems. And it does. I don't want to run the risk um, of my tank bogging, um, whether that is a real oasis or not. So... We're going to swerve to avoid what we think we can see. And that slows us down and puts us back to relative range zero. Germans will draw their card. Now, I have a movement card and I've got a firing card. I think to maximize my options, I'm going to get my very dormant Group B moving. And my tank, it's going to be a difficult shot because they're still moving too, is going to try and put an armor-piercing round through, um, through that anti-tank gun using this card. And we miss. Well, it was worth a shot. Okay, good to have some terrain options. The Germans have gained some terrain and a firing card, so I think, somewhat fixating on my Matilda, their gun is going to have a bit of a spit back at me. Ah, and it suffered a malfunction. Okay, now you guys get to see what it's like. So now the um, the panic has transferred to the Germans as uh, clearly more sand than is good for it has got into the mechanism of their weapon. And they're going to have to try to do something about that post-haste. For me, meanwhile... I'm going to, because my Matilda's quite a heavily armoured beast, I'm going to have my infantry get behind this low wall or low ridge or whatever it is in, in the desert rules. Probably more likely a low ridge, given where we are. While my tank will come to a halt, but will enter the brush. So that gives us... a little bit of concealment and it also means we're not moving so our shooting might actually become a tiny bit more accurate oh dear look at that how many rally cards does a man need so the germans meanwhile the new card they drew at the end of their last turn is a pretty decent firing card but at the moment, I still don't think any of their groups can benefit from it, except... Ah, their group C does benefit from it and can target my group B. So that's good. That gives them a fair bit to do. So their group B is going to attempt to repair their ordnance while their group C fires this card at my group B. So I'll check for the ordnance repair first. 
And unfortunately for me, they succeed. They're clearly much more on the ball when it comes to uh, unblocking jammed breaches. And their group C is going to open fire. So that's fire strength of four. It's only a minus one in our favor because they're firing obliquely at my group. So attack strength is reduced to three. And very regrettably, I have no concealment cards. So let's see what happens. Private Tresham is fine. Private Willis is pinned. Private Cleary is pinned. Private Cottrell, ooh, is um, very nearly killed outright, but pinned. Private Gilfallon um, is all right. And the good news for me, under the desert rules, that is a malfunction for the Germans. So I'll just see which one it was. Very fortunately for me, it's the light machine gun that jams up. So I'm just going to quickly find the token for that weapon. Much to my relief, the normally reliable German uh, LMG has um, stopped firing. They do still get to resolve the last attack, but it is reduced in strength slightly, and that's against Corporal Burns who is fine. So that was a relief. And it has left the Germans slightly weakened there. So I'm actually quite happy with that result. And they will just draw their card. Now, what am I going to do? Having stupidly asked how many uh, rally cards does a man need, <laughs> I now have my answer. I might also take a bit of a risk as a free action, my Piper is going to play up. So that's a, a free action for the group. So now that the Piper is playing, any infantry group that is adjacent, as well as his own, obviously, has their morale and panic values raised by one. But... Conversely, their KIA values are reduced by one. So this is where the double-edged side to it comes in. But I am going to play, from my immense stock of rally cards, a rally three just to get these men back on their feet. And that, unfortunately, ends my turn because I can't do anything else with these cards in my hand and I can't discard because I'd rallied a group. So I think it's going to be another long hunker down until we get some decent cards. Um, the Germans are beginning to do better. They've drawn another movement card. Now they have some choices it might be a good idea if they try and get a couple of their groups into cover because their groups B and C are horribly exposed and they do have a brush card which would do them quite nicely. They're also conscious they need to repair that light machine gun. Now moving an infantry gun is awkward. You always have to play a sideways movement card before you can follow it up with uh, a regular movement. So it just reflects the awkwardness in shifting the thing around. And also while you're shifting it around, it can't fire. So the Germans have to think very carefully about whether they want to do this. The only consolation they have is that when the gun is being lugged around, it's going to be a slightly harder target for my tank. So they decide that it is worth it 
and they are or, or actually do they do they let me think about this no i think what will happen first is the germans will try and get that lmg back into action actually no let's do it they do want to get that gun into some kind of cover so that'll be their sideways movement card to begin the process. So they move away from the dropped machine pistol and they're on their way to some cover, they hope. In the meantime, Private Schussel's going to try and fix his machine gun and he succeeds spectacularly. Very efficient of him. So at that point, the Germans are going to draw... So what am I going to do? This is a bit of a distressing development. Um, do you know, I'm actually going to just discard two cards. I don't want to discard any terrain on them because I might just make their life easier. I don't have anything nasty like soft sand that can affect their infantry gun. So I'm just going to discard those two and hope I get something nice. I'll take movement and a firing card. So the Germans um, have got a marsh card, which is nasty soft sand, which they could discard on someone. Um, the trouble is they have no other movement cards, so maybe... Maybe it was not a good idea risking that move so early. And now the question is, do they discard that uselessly? Because their other cards are quite useful to them. Mainly morale, the brush card and a concealment card. With some reluctance, they're going to do it because none of my groups are moving, so they can't discard this on any of them. So they're just going to put up with that. Draw another card. Now, I, in the meantime, I think I will... Hmm, what do I want to do? I think I'll take a chance on trying to knock that infantry gun out again. It's going to be a difficult shot. But again, worth trying. So, no, I miss. And I can't acquire them because they're on the move. But it was worth it. I also think I won't advance my other groups any further just yet. I really want the tank to, to catch up. Although, I could push those men forward a bit. Down the gully. Actually, yes, I might do that. It does mean Group B temporarily loses the benefit of hearing the Piper. But he's in fairly safe terrain. And it just gets us a little bit more forward for when Group B catches up. So we shall do that. And I think, well, I've got no choice. I'll have to leave it at that. Oh, this is good stuff. We're gaining some mobility and my tank is clearly eager to have another go. What about the Germans? Uh, much to their disappointment, their card turns out to be a rally card, which they can't really, they can't really use. So they're just going to discard it because it's quite a weak one. The well, British are really building up some momentum here. I'm going to play this Woods card. And this is taking a bit... Actually, before I do that, I will tell the Piper to stop playing. Because there's a 50-50 chance that this Woods card, or Oasis card as it is in the desert, will turn out to be open ground. And it does turn out to be open ground. So he shuts up at just the right time because my group A is now exposed in the open, looking somewhat bewilderedly at what they thought was supposed to be an oasis, but wasn't. Sigh. I'm going to get my group two moving to catch up with them. And 
and while that's happening my tank is going to try and take out its nemesis again so that is for the benefit of the anti-tank gun and we miss again unfortunately for me desert rules and malfunctions being what they are it means that the tank's ordnance has broken again sigh deep sigh let's just hope i get something i can use ah a marsh that could be very handy if i get a chance to discard it well marsh i do mean soft sand so the Germans turn over their card, but all they've got is a stream now, which functions as a wadi in the desert rules. Um, that's something they'd really rather keep for themselves. Um, but they still have no way of getting to it, and the other cards they have are quite useful. So with some reluctance, they're going to discard it. Not on me, because they don't want to give me any terrain benefits, but they'll just put it in the discard pile, and they'll draw a card. So I'm going to have to stop this video here at this point. <clears throat> I will pick it up again as soon as I can. But just to recap on the tactical situation, the... Um, the Germans have not had the benefit of much mobility at all this game. They've put out a fair amount of fire, including very, you know, impressively bouncing a shell off my tank on the first turn. But they're having major trouble trying to get their infantry gun into some sort of trouble. Uh, sorry, some sort of cover. Sorry, Freudian slip there. My chaps are doing much better on the mobility front. We're advancing fairly steadily, but I would feel happier if my sergeant and the piper were in some kind of defensible terrain. And it remains to be seen what I can get my group B into. Um, lastly, that tank probably needs...